All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined all the way from Mexico City by Matthew Brackett. How are you doing, Matthew? Very well, John. Thank you. It's great to be here with you and share the microphone. That's yeah, so absolutely. Better. And Matthew is a leadership resilience educator and coach who partnered with leaders to assess, adapt, and accelerate life transformation by understanding uh, and how to reconcile and un by understanding and reconciling their tensions. Clients walk away with reframe clarity and balance along with personal craft and development plan. And uh, and you serve you know twenty years, uh, thirty years with formal ministry through life leadership coaching and education. In order you transitioned after that, in order to continue your work in serving human development. And what we're going to talk about today is the concept of hybrid leadership, right? Because I think that's something that is it's a very interesting topic because the whole nature of work, uh, not just the way we work, but the way organizations are structured today. The hybrid nature, even of the makeup of organizations. Now you often have uh, full time employees, you have, um, and they may or may not be virtual. You may have long term contract workers, you may have short term contract workers, you may have all of these different types of employees. And so it's not just the whether it's remote in the office, it's also the mixture of types of people. So it's quite, it's quite challenging. So in your work, Matthew, um, first of all, because you've recently been do done, a, uh, I think you've recently been working on a master's degree um, in this topic, but what is what is the core essence, do you think, of hybrid leadership and how, to, at least how to approach it in the best fashion possible? Thank you, John. Thank you for that. Yes, I, I, I did a degree in, in the master's in the psychology of leadership, which really looks at not leadership as a theory, but the, the leadership, the person in leadership, and also the mm -hmm. person, the people being led. Right. So we, I always like to begin with just, you know, what we understand by leadership, that it's a process, it's a dynamic process. And in the hybrid format, it's no, no less of a dynamic process, it's probably more dynamic. Right? So it's a dynamic process whereby someone, someone influences a group of individuals to reach a common goal. Mm -hmm. And I start with that because it's so important in leadership, in the hybrid leadership, to go back to those basics of really, of first of all, identity. Who are we as in our organization? And what are what is our mission? What are we trying to do? So what is our purpose as an organization or as a hybrid team? Mm -hmm. What is our purpose as a professional organization? And this is about then identity and then identifying then our roles and our tasks in this new model. Mm -hmm. As the world quickly transitioned through three quick three models in a very short span of, of years, which is what they call work 100, you know, work 100, which is um, just the normal the traditional workplace. Yeah. Work 2.0, right, which was totally virtual mm -hmm. during the pandemic. And then work 3.0, which is now companies trying to reconcile and find this hybrid so the pandemic led to a lot of discovery that of challenged the traditional workforce, as we well know. And mm -hmm. so work 3.0 is now this, this finding the right hybrid fit for a company. And what's, and what's important here is, again, we talked about identity. Yep. And then it's about rebuilding a robust corporate or organizational culture around what's our vision as a hybrid in a hybrid model. Mm -hmm. How are we going to communicate in the hybrid model? What are the productivity metrics in a hybrid model? And what's accountability look like? Accountability and, you know, time was oftentimes the, um, the currency in work. Yeah. In a hybrid model, well, it's, it's no longer the currency. Yeah. So leadership has to shift sort of, it's a whole belief system in, 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 tradition, in yeah. the way a leader thinks. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think Matt, I think one of the, the one of the challenges is forced upon leaders as well is Matthew is that if you look at it today, roles within the, the things that you need to get done in an or, in most organizations have become very very specific, and you need expertise, very deep expertise in a lot of things. So it doesn't pay most organizations now to have all of these people as full time. 
Um, so there's a lot more contracting or hiring part-time people to do specific things. And that's the real, and to your point is, if you're going to build a culture, but you also have to build a culture where some of the people only work for you a few hours a week. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then it's, and what, and to, to your point, what I'm saying is then like an organization has to select a hybrid model that best works for the workforce, the mm-hmm. organization. And like you said, there's so many types of, of employees that we have. The, the danger, if, as just with our human reaction, is all of a sudden everyone wanted to go virtual. Everyone wanted to go remote. Um, but that's, you know, we don't go remote just for the sake of going remote. And we yeah, don't yeah. go hybrid just for the sake of going hybrid. And we don't go in person 100% just for the sake of it. We have to have what's what's the model that best suits who we are in an organization and what we want to achieve and how do we adapt accordingly. And, and what it requires of a leader, uh, two things come to mind is is agility and this is right. a big thing in, in a leader the mental agility cognitive agility emotional agility and just because you're you're managing a lot more pieces mm-hmm. and how do i keep my finger on the pulse in an effective way and how do i stay connected to my people another thing that i would say and this is a huge demand on people in managerial or leadership roles is presence if, right. if your organization has a hybrid model it's the leader has to be more present. Right? The leader probably won't have the luxury of working, you know, from home or virtually on the same regular basis as as the other people will, because nothing can take the place, in my view, nothing can take the place of presence. Right? Mm-hmm. You can pick up on so much more about an organization. But let's go back then. What we're talking about agility is, then how do we pick up on all these invisible and silent signals in the workforce? When we're not present, we have to find ways to do that in, in a virtual manner, right? In the way we connect with our people. And so I go back to work intentionality. Leaders have to be, they've always have to be intentional. But I think more that there's a demand on leadership to be much more intentional and conscious and cognizant of, of who I am as a leader, what my job is, and how do I keep my finger on the pulse? How, how do I stay connected with my people? How do I create connections among my people when they're not seeing each other on a regular basis? Because mm-hmm. in my view, when, when, or, when people aren't able to interact with each other on a regular basis, um, cohesiveness is lost. And I also think creativity is lost. You know, a lot of creativity can happen in in-person place because, you know, through spontaneous conversations and stuff like that. So how do we create that cohesiveness how do we create that connection and how do we maybe you know offsites i think have also become another thing that's really yeah. important. and bringing our people offsite you know a, a few times a year where they also meet people from other teams people that they're always talked to virtually but that they're able to connect because in mm-hmm. the end we, we can never take away the fact that as human beings we are social beings yeah and at some point that that connection is it's it's a way to really enhance the workforce and enhance performance and productivity. Mm-hmm. And so one of the one of the big challenges I think um, leaders have, and I agree with you on agility, I think that's that's absolutely critical. I think anybody who's in any leadership position today needs to they need to rethink their whole approach and on their open mindedness perhaps to different to different constructions and different ways of doing things. I think that's uh, that's critical. And also on the communication front, because um, you know, let's face it, Max. I mean, once upon a time, leaders were leaders were were, were pretty good at, at communicating, but in one way only, right? You know, they right. would have to make a, a speech to the company or send out an email. Or and now with all these, now you know, people there's so many different generations in the workplace now. People receive information differently, so you can't do a one size fits all anymore. Right? No, no, and that's again, it goes to. A, it goes back to what we talked about agility and and that's a broad word but it's just um it's more it's there's a lot more demands on leadership to be on their toes to be creative and to be connected one of the dangers you know in in a hybrid workplace is is um is isolation or disengagement right can be a natural thing that happens with human beings so you know how do we go back how do we help with that but also when we talk about the hybrid model, there's also other models out there, which is just you right. know, a virtual model. And, and now with the way technology has grown, the way the just the workforce has grown across in, across boundaries. So we have, you know, some people lead across boundaries. And that's a whole nother topic about how do we lead 
effectively across boundaries and across cultures because mm. culture intercultural teams are growing a lot more and then as you said then there's intergenerational teams right and to your point is how do, how do i make sure as a leader that i'm connecting so so I just, a lot of training and education just about how you know what are the generations that i'm dealing with that i'm leading and how to, how do i connect with them because each generation i can probably yeah. connect in a different way and then what are the culture realities that i'm dealing with and how to how can i make sure that i am connecting and communicating in the proper way um, with the cultural realities that, that i have to deal with that's mm -hmm. obviously with more you know, global organizations that, that constantly lead across cultures right. and across boundaries. Definitely um, a lot of challenges, but, but I think it's, it's exciting challenges. For no, no, I, I, I think, I think it is exciting challenges. And I think uh, also um, part of it too, is it's a great challenge to leaders because, um, you know, to your point, if you're going to reach out across cultures, across um, generations, uh, all of that is, that you are going to, you're going to need to get to know people better. I think that's probably the best way. I mean, maybe not on, you know, if you're a leader larger, but certainly, you know, at least at some level, you have to understand all the different groups and the individuals on, on maybe on a deeper level than you ever had to before. Right. Definitely. There's a lot more demands in that regard of the education and, and consciousness and awareness that a leader has to have nowadays, you know, from going from maybe small town America or Ireland, yeah. any country to now you're leading on this global level or just national level. And, and we're all, so many countries have become so there's so much more cultural differences. And so, yes, and I like to go back to a few leadership principles that are, are always yeah. the same across the board. And, but it's how we apply them, you know, you know Self-awareness for me is so important in a leader. And when we talk about awareness and about education and about, you know, the cultural awareness, I think self-awareness is one of the greatest asset leadership assets, but also lack of self-awareness is one of the greatest leadership liabilities. Yeah, totally. Now we're caught in a rough, you know, kind of between a rock and a hard place there, because if we don't have the awareness, then how, then how do I know that I don't have the awareness? Right? And so and that's sort of what I do around coaching and education. It's so important because it forces someone in a leadership role to stop, to reflect, and, and to really to reflect on themselves. And if we include in that some, you know, some sort of assessment or a 360 where we bring in a lot of valuable information about how someone is perceived or how someone is shown, we, we, bring, we, we bring a lot of valuable information to the surface. So self-awareness, it's about emotional intelligence, social intelligence, it's about openness. And when you're leading across boundaries, generations, openness is so important. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're just our worst enemies because of the way that we are as human beings with our biases, you know, and our unconscious biases. So self-awareness, intentionality, which I already mentioned. Yeah. Presence is, is so important now. And how do I become present in a virtual or in a hybrid model? But, but presence is always so important because presence also is about approachability. It's about availability. It's about connection. And then communication. Yeah. Communication, as we know, and just as human beings, it's so important. But in leadership, one of the greatest jobs of a leader is to communicate, to communicate clearly, to communicate expectations, to communicate consequences, and to repeat that. Right. Mm -hmm. And to repeat the message. And also mm -hmm. to receive, all right, what are you understanding from my messaging? Yeah. And one, 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 other, one other interesting part of, of what you just outlined there, you know, especially around the, the communication and making yourself present and unavailable and, and all of those things, it means that, you know, for a lot of leaders, it's a challenge now because they have to come out from behind the screen, if you like, uh, and, and, be more, and be more engaged. And as you said, like having that purpose and, and meaning and but being able to articulate how the business lives up to it i think that's incredible incredibly important part that everybody across the organization understands mm -hmm. that people are not just a bumper sticker right yes I, I i say that the greatest gift one of the greatest gifts that you can give as a leader is clarity of messaging clarity of yeah. communication and your job is to continue to beat that drum um because you have other people that are doing all the tasks and all that you have to keep people on task, people, keep people together, keep people on mission, right? So that we can perform really well, keep people connected. And the last point about those leadership principles is the accountability. Yeah. 
vulnerability mechanisms are so important, as you well know, for, for culture, for, for performance, for everything. Mm-hmm. So and I think, and just on that point of accountability, because I think sometimes people, you know, get so wrapped up in all the other parts that they that they forget sometimes that at the end of the day, the results, <laughs> it's a, we're in, we're in business, we're in business to, you know, achieve certain goals and results. And so the accountability, so to have a hybrid organization, to have flexibility, to have the communication, all of, all of that, um, there's a responsibility on everyone then to be accountable and accountable for themselves first and foremost. Cause I always find that thing, Matthew, you know, is uh, when, when people talk about accountability, everybody says accountability is fantastic and they're all behind it. But what they normally mean is holding you accountable, not me. It's right. accountability for other people. And people don't realize that accountability starts with yourself. It does. Well, and a huge point there is just self-leadership. Right? When yeah. I talk about leadership, it, all, it begins with how I lead myself, how I lead those in my closer inner circles of influence, and then how I lead in an organizational context right? or how I lead my teams. Mm-hmm. So yes, that accountability is so important. I like. I want to highlight four points that can be really just concrete points of when we're in a hybrid model. But you know, creating a sense of belonging is really important. How do we create a sense of belonging amongst our people? How do we create empowerment and engagement? And we, we don't have enough time to talk about all the answers to these. But this is something that as leaders we want to think about. Yeah. How do we strengthen our communication in this model? And as you were, yeah, as you were saying, how do we balance flexibility and accountability? Mm-hmm. Right. And then leaders have to ask themselves the question: Do my employees, if we're going to shift to a hybrid model, or whatever model it is, do my employees have everything they need to be effective? Right. Yeah, that's it's an interesting it's an interesting point uh, too, Matthew. Because I mean, we, I guess during COVID, when all those companies had to go virtual, uh, there wasn't a lot of thought about. <laughs> okay, well, do you actually have an environment to be virtual in? You know, maybe you maybe you ha- have a house and it's great and you can dedicate a spare room, whatever, to the office. Maybe you share a place with other people and, you know, you're, one of your roommates is an aspiring heavy metal drummer or something, you know. So um, I think those are things that we didn't think through at the time or people didn't think through, but they need to think about now is it's great to be virtual, but do you have exactly everything you need? Do you have the right environment? And and I think the other thing as an employee is to have that conversation with your manager about what is the best working arrangement if somebody's going to be hired. But how can you how can you build trust on both sides so that everybody can operate together? Right, and trust it's a two way street as you well know. Yeah, but it really starts with leadership showing trust in their people until until you can't trust. But and that's how I think in my view that's how the, the climate the trust climate is is created. Um, but it's it's definitely complex. Again, with COVID, it's just I mean it was a crisis situation. Mm-hmm. How how could you think of everything? But uh, people are starting to figure it out. But I think on the the other side of that is that they also realize that it is healthy for people to leave their homes to do to to go to a different space to work, right? What what they've also seen is that people's personal lives have suffered, right? The the, the sort of the ambiguity or fuzziness around boundaries. Um. You know, the work started to invade personal spaces, and that's that's not healthy as well. One thing I want I wanted to say as well, John, is something that you were saying before is about accountability. Is some, there's this mentality which is kind of strange that I sort of I expect my organization to to maybe do a lot more for me than than maybe generations ago when people expected. It was before it was just you know I show up, I do a job, I get a paycheck, and I yep. go. But now there's there's a lot more that people expect. And I think there's a positive side of development as just as a human race, that sure. organizations where we're not machines, that we want to care for our people and well-being in the workplace and in the personal space is important. But there's also this sort of people are beginning to expect a lot more from the organization. <laughs> and to point that, well, you know, you do your job. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's why you're here. I know. I don't know. No, yeah, it, it is a good it is a good point. Like there is a certain level of in- of entitlement and expectations that are, are creeping in and obviously you know with generations are changing attitudes um yeah i mean we grow up in 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 professional life and business always believing you are one you know you're one step away from getting fired right you know right. that all kept you always focused um and you wouldn't have thought of saying like well here's what i need in order to be successful but i mean it's changed a lot so yeah i think there's a still some balancing out to be done yet 
Yeah, it's finding that balance. Again, that's the art, the art of leadership, which is good communication. And then just creating just clarity. Clarity. Clarity around expectations, clarity around what you have. Um, and and I just one one last one last quick question, Matthew. Do you believe as as leadership evolves like this, do you think it's going to provide maybe opportunities for for maybe people in the past who wouldn't have been considered like maybe classically good leaders or have the capabilities to be you know a traditional leader? Maybe some it's opened a lot wider now because the skill set is is so much wider. Uh -huh. Yes, but well, there's a lot I could say. I don't have a quick answer sure. to that. To tweet, there's actually one other thing came up while you were asking that question is even the workforce, the device, the people that couldn't go to work before can now work um, from yeah. home, right? And and still care for, and if they have disabilities, they can work from wherever they are. So there's so many, so many good things to this. Now about leadership, I just think there's a, there's a problem in our traditional model of that you get promoted because you've been good at what you did. And yeah. because there's not a lot of thought around, well, but will you be good? at this because one thing is managing i don't know the higher you go up the more you manage problems the more you manage people mm -hmm. right and, and not everyone is cut out for that it's, it's not everyone's strength right yeah. <laughs> I, I used to i used to often when i would uh, have people like be doing reviews or whatever and you know ask people like what do they want to do and they oh yeah well I'm enjoying what I'm doing now, but then you know I want to and I want, I want to move up and I you know I want to lead a team and all that kind of stuff. And I used to say you want to manage people. And go, yeah, yeah. And go, Why? And they'd be like, well, and then I'd say, do you want to know the reality of managing people? Because <laughs> it's very different from what you just said. <laughs> to your point, though, we have grown up in this thing is like when you get we're, we're very bad at creating career paths that don't involve managing people. Right. We have to find other ways that where we promote people, where we compensate right their expertise and their experience and their years of dedication and loyalty. But that doesn't necessarily have to be that you're we're gonna put we have to put you in a position where you're not gonna flourish, right? Mm -hmm. And the people under you won't flourish either. But lose lose situation. Right? Or the other thing is, you know, well, let's if we're gonna put you there, let's we're gonna prepare you properly because we want you to succeed mm -hmm. and we want our people to succeed. So so we have, I think there's a lot of shifting to, to do yeah. to a better model. Absolutely. Well, listen, Matthew, this has been fascinating. All of Matthew's information is going to be below the video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Thank you. Thank you, John. So I run Bracket Alliance, really, and there's two types of services, which is individual coaching towards people, in, in, especially in senior leadership roles. But I meet that in, at that intersection between their personal and professional life. Because in my view, that, that integrated and holistic approach is so important. As I said, how we lead ourselves, how we lead in those around us, and then, our, and then in organizational context. And I offer education or speaking also about a lot of aspects around leadership. And, and for me, it's, you know, that holistic approach for me is it's lead better, love better, and live better. Excellent. I love it. Thank you, John. That's fantastic. Well, I encourage you to go check out Matthew. As I said, all the links will be below this video. Thank you again. Thank you for watching, listening. See you all again soon.